Last week, I shared some footage and thoughts about a beautiful clay that I found by the side of the road. My goal with that video was to show just how good wild clays can be, to show that they can be as good and even better than commercial clays. That using clay you dig yourself need not be a sacrifice. Indeed, it can be an evolution in your pottery practice. But in an effort to be transparent, comprehensive, and balanced, this week I'd like to show you just how bad a wild clay can be. If you go out looking for clay, you stand a solid chance of finding a really good one, like the one I shared last week. But you could also find a real dud, like this one. Trying to throw a cup with this clay required some finesse, which is not my forte. My first attempt ripped through it completely. By working very gently and very slowly, I coerced a little cup out of this little muck. I trimmed it and bisque fired it along with a test bar to test shrinkage. See, this is really just a soil with a high clay content. It isn't anything like a vein of pure clay. Some clay was deposited by the river, and the clay mixed with organic matter and sand and probably manure and twigs and whatever else was around. So there's enough clay in this mud to hold it together, but barely. At the end of the video, I'll show you what this looks like after firing in the kiln. You may be surprised at how this very dark brown clay ends up. So what makes this clay so bad? Well, it isn't the clay itself, but rather all of the other stuff that's in this muck, which isn't clay. At this point, we need to differentiate a seemingly pedantic but very important pair of terms here. Clay versus clay body. Almost everybody says clay, when what they're actually referring to is a clay body. I do it myself, often. Sometimes this is done with full knowledge of the difference, but a preference for speaking casually. Often, however, it is done without realizing what is being said or left unsaid, and this can lead to confusion. Clay is a mineral. Clay is microscopic platelets that hold water between them, so that when hydrated, they slide over one another. This is what makes wet clay plastic. One clay will vary from the next in the size of platelet and the precise chemical formula. These in turn are affected by the kind of rock that the clay has weathered from and the method of weathering, erosion, and deposition. The stuff that we use in pottery is not pure clay. It is a mixture of this mineral, called clay, plus several other ingredients. This mixture is called a clay body. Whatever you buy at the ceramic supply store or use in the studio is a clay body. The stuff that you add to a glaze, on the other hand, like kaolin, is closer to a pure clay mineral. We add things to clay for many reasons, so that we can fire it to lower temperatures, so that it shrinks less, so that it is less porous. For example, a traditional porcelain contains only three ingredients. Kaolin, a relatively pure clay mineral, plus silica, plus feldspar. The feldspar helps everything melt at a lower temperature. The silica helps form a strong and non-porous matrix. And the kaolin makes the whole mixture workable when wet. Clay absorbs water, and it shrinks as it dries and loses that water, and again shrinks as it's fired to hotter temperatures. These other ingredients typically don't absorb water and don't contribute to the shrinkage of a clay body. Okay, enough of all of that today. That was all to get around to trying to explain what's going on with this clay, which isn't pure clay at all. The clay isn't the problem, it's all of the other stuff in it. Here's the test bar that I made out of this muck to measure shrinkage. A normal clay body will shrink from wet, workable clay to bisque fired by about 10%. This test bar shrank only 3% from wet to bisque fired. A normal clay body, like a porcelain mentioned above, might have about 50% clay in the recipe. Which would lead me to believe, with some rudimentary mathematics, that this brown muck contains somewhere around 15% clay. That would explain why it's so difficult to work with. Clay is the ingredient that is plastic and makes working with it while wet enjoyable. So to have less than a third the amount of clay as a porcelain, porcelain which is notoriously difficult to work with compared to other clay bodies, I can understand why this is so difficult to throw. And yet, and yet, it is possible to make pottery with this. So after all, I want you to see that when you go out looking for clay, whatever you might find, 
you still have an opportunity to learn and play and experiment. You could teach your kids all about the earth and soil and geology and how to make things with your hands. Thanks for watching.